Cyclophosphamide and ifosfamide are anti-neoplastics and immune-suppressing drugs used to treat a wide variety of cancers as well as several autoimmune diseases like lupus and myasthenia gravis. In this visual mnemonic, I will teach you an easy way to remember the drug names, clinical uses, and side effects so you'll be set for the NCLEX. For today's scene, we're headed into this lava cave with our friend, a paleontologist. Little did she know when she entered the cave that she would run into a cyclops. This cyclops is our symbol for the drug cyclophosphamide. It's the cyclophosphamide cyclops. Great, now let's move on to the next drug name that you should know. The paleontologist came into this cave with hopes of finding some, what else, fossils. And it looks like there's a big one there at the back of the cave. Now she just has to get past this cyclops to get it. Anyway, this big fossil is our symbol for the drug isophosphamide. Fossil for isophosphamide? It's the isophosphamide fossil. Cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide belong to the same class of drugs known as alkylating agents. Now, let's move on to learn when they are used in practice. The fossil is of an enormous crab. What an amazing discovery. Here at Pixarize, we use a crab to symbolize cancer. You know, since the zodiac sign for cancer is a crab, and cancer was named for the lumps it formed in the body, which were thought to resemble crabs under the skin. Cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide are chemotherapy agents that can be used to treat a wide variety of cancers, including leukemias, lymphomas, lung cancers, and so on. They work by killing cells that multiply quickly, which obviously includes cancer cells. Although she wasn't expecting a cyclops, the paleontologist did know that this was a lava cave. She came prepared with a fire extinguisher, just in case anything catches on fire. This fire extinguisher is our symbol to remind you that cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide are also anti-inflammatory drugs. Because fire extinguishers are used to put out flames or inflammation, making them anti-inflammatory, if you get what I mean. These anti-inflammatory properties are useful in treating autoimmune diseases like lupus and myasthenia gravis. Functionally, this works because the immune cells that cause inflammation also replicate quickly, which makes them a target of these drugs, just like cancer cells. Got that? Okay, so we know that these drugs are used for treating cancer and autoimmune diseases. So what are the side effects of taking cyclophosphamide or iphosphamide? Well, let's find out. Luckily for the paleontologist, the cyclops hasn't noticed her yet. He's too busy peeing on the cave wall, which is covered in, is that blood? Sure enough, the cave wall is covered in blood. You know, this cyclops urinating on a bloody wall reminds me that a unique adverse effect of cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide is hemorrhagic cystitis. That's just another way to say bladder damage causing bloody urine. Urinating on a bloody wall for blood in the urine. Get it? Hemorrhagic cystitis is pretty common for patients taking these drugs and is usually not life-threatening. It can usually be treated or prevented by drinking plenty of water. The blood on the wall combined with these empty, broken bones on the floor make me think that we should get out of here ASAP. Those bones must be what remains of the Cyclops' last meal. By the way, these empty, broken bones are here to symbolize bone marrow suppression. Cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide reduce the activity of bone marrow, whose purpose is to create blood cells. You see, cells in bone marrow reproduce quickly to pump out red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. We already mentioned that cyclophosphamide kills cells that reproduce quickly, so this suppresses the bone marrow. This can cause anemia due to less red blood cells, infections due to less white blood cells, and bleeding due to a reduction in platelets. Just remember these empty, broken bones to remember bone marrow suppression. The smell of the blood, urine, and decomposing bones is almost too much to handle. And our friend here better keep it together or she'll get the Cyclops' attention. Her face is starting to turn green and she looks like she's about to vomit. This nauseous paleontologist can remind you that cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide, and most chemotherapy drugs in general, can cause GI disturbances like nausea and vomiting. Again, these drugs target rapidly dividing cells to kill the cancer, but the drug also kills rapidly dividing cells in other parts of the body, like the bone marrow, as we talked about, as well as the cells lining our GI tract. This makes patients feel nauseous and can cause vomiting. Usually, patients will receive an antiemetic before chemotherapy, 
and will receive a prescription to take it home to manage this side effect. And that covers the most important facts about these drugs. Let's review and get the heck out of here before this cyclops notices us. Cyclophosphamide and ifosfamide are chemotherapy drugs that can treat a wide variety of cancers. They also have anti-inflammatory properties that are used to treat autoimmune conditions like lupus and myasthenia gravis. An important side effect of these drugs is hemorrhagic cystitis or bladder damage causing bleeding into the urine. It also causes the side effects common to most chemotherapy drugs, bone marrow suppression and GI upset. You can go ahead and try to get the fossil if you dare, but I'm getting out of here. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.